How's it, everyone? Hope you're having an amazing day. Welcome to How's It Cousins, the podcast where we take a look at the unique people of the world, the interesting things they do. We talk about them, we relate to them, and hopefully we help you, our audience, relate to us as well. This week, we're getting hyped for the upcoming WWE pay-per-view. Yes. Because it marks the return of one of our favorite characters from wrestling history, The Undertaker. Yes. I was like, Chris, are you talking about The Undertaker? Yo, I'm down to talk about The Undertaker. Let's do this. Aloha, Alvin. Welcome to the WWE podcast. Yeah, man. I'm always down to talk to you. It's always fun. Let's do it. But before we even get into that, I'd like to introduce a guest that we have on this week's show. So, Kuroi Boy, can you tell the viewers who you are and where people can find you on the internet? Yo, yo, yo. This is your boy, Kuroi Boy. I'm just kidding. That's not how I really talk. This is Kuroi. (laughs) You can find me at twitch.tv on Instagram. And I think that's about it. And Twitter at Kuroi Boy. K-U-R-O-I-B-O-Y. Except on Twitter, there's an underscore between the I and the B. All right. Like that branding. So before we get started, I'd like to remind everybody that we are recording this show live on twitch.tv slash housing network, simul streaming with twitch.tv slash Boy this time. That's me. If you like what you're listening to, you can... Find it on all the popular podcast services, including iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, and now iHeartRadio. Follow us on social media at How's It Network to see when we're going live if you want to jump in and participate in the show. Alvin, you need to plug anything before we get started? Yes, my name is Aloha Alvin. I'm working on something big, so please keep checking back at AlohaAlvin.com. So, The Undertaker, Mark William Calloway, as he is known is one of the greatest professional wrestlers of all time. And I was shook to see that at age 54, he's going to wrestle again in the upcoming pay-per-view WWE is holding in Saudi Arabia. Any thoughts on the return of someone who's, I would say, arguably past his prime already in such a big event? Okay, wait, Chris, I, I got to ask this. So, Kuroi, you definitely know wrestling better than me. Do you know what the average age is of the badasses? Because I feel like the numbers usually go up. Like of the top guys? Yeah, like the top guys. You know, like Heartbreak Kid, before he stopped, he was getting older too, you know? Uh, The average age, I believe, right now is around 32. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, interesting. But there are some, like, younger cats in there. Like, there are like 26 year olds 27 year olds okay but what about so this guy's 54 though so now we're talking average yeah there's some guys coming up that they're younger but these guys that have had their legacy and had their big break they keep clawing back and i'm curious as to why we think that is well for this show specifically it's all by request oh that makes sense that makes sense yeah so the people that are in contact with wwe for the Saudi show, so the Saudi Arabia people, they've requested a lot of these matches that are happening that night. So it has nothing to do with like their weekly episodic television shows, nothing to do with any of their storylines. It's just strictly there. Kuroi, I'm going to throw it down, especially after you said that. One of my favorites of all time, Goldberg. One of my favorites of all time, Undertaker. So they're totally singing my tune. You know, like the, the fact that you said it was specifically requested... That's screaming my name, man. That's an interesting point. Precisely. I mean, it's interesting because the WWE struck this multi-year deal with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to host these live events there. So I guess maybe people are nostalgic for these kind of matches. Maybe they're not as caught up to like the newest WWE stuff. So they'd rather see some of these legacy things take place. Yeah, well, I mean, they're not caught up at all. I'm not sure if you guys heard, but the last time they were there, uh, there was a random Japanese sumo wrestler that came in. Oh, wow. To, like, one of their, like, matches. It was, like, one of their battle okay, royal wait. matches. Male or female? Male. Oh, okay, just checking. There's a famous female that my friends are, like, in love with, so I'm not sure if that's a yeah, different person. Okay, anyway, anyway. Well, wait, famous female sumo wrestler? Oh, sorry. You're right. You're right. I famous, was female, say- famous female Japanese wrestler. My friend. Oh. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're right. Not, not sumo. You're right. That wrestler was there 
because the royal family originally wanted Yokozuna. Oh. But Yokozuna's dead. Gotcha, gotcha. For some reason, the relay of that information never got to the royal family. So they got a stand-in, essentially. Oh, fascinating, fascinating. Interesting. So it's funny you mentioned, right? Even culturally, Saudi Arabia, they banned movie theaters up until kind of recently. So it's understandable that they'd be behind on some of the media that takes place in the rest of the world. Yeah, exactly. And I'll ask this because I've been wondering this kind of stuff. So definitely a big Undertaker fan. I was aware of the streak, which is no longer going on. But for a very long time, there's that streak, which I thought was cool. On that note, are there other streaks that I should be aware of as a guy who is not caught up? Not anything big. Interesting. Because for me, both of these guys are streak guys. The Goldberg streak was, I enjoyed that so much, all the aggression. Even though my friends were like, dude, he's fighting nobodies. I still loved it. You know, I was a huge Goldberg fan. And that's why Goldberg doesn't like WCW anymore. Oh, wait, hold up, hold up. I need, I need elaboration, man. What, what does that mean? What happened? So they essentially screwed him out of his undefeated streak in WCW. So he got like super duper pissed off. Hmm. So when we're talking about a streak, so for anyone listening or anyone in various chats, we had mentioned this on another podcast a number of weeks ago to where The Undertaker... I know we... Yes, wrestling is staged and a little bit fake as you call it, but yes... He had a 21 and 0 undefeated streak, which is unheard of in professional wrestling. At WrestleMania. At WrestleMania, correct. Yes, yes. Because the Goldberg streak, see, okay, so as my friends were telling me for the Undertaker streak, it was like, yo, one day he will lose. And the idea is he's not going to lose to a schmuck. Whoever he loses to will get a huge amount of spotlight. So it's like passing on the torch. Now, that same logic, whoever Goldberg lost to, I'm assuming was a badass. Because I don't remember who he lost to. Neither do I. I know oh, I think it's someone mm-hmm. from the NWO, I believe. Yeah, that make, see, that makes sense. That, that makes sense. Yeah, Wolfpack and yeah, yeah, yeah. So they tried to give Goldberg some sort of like streak when he got to the WWE. Oh, fascinating. But they ended it like super quick. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, think he it's... only went for a couple months before they ended it. Oh. Hmm. See, it's so again, like, you know, I mean, I I enjoy the stuff and I know even I know it's not real in that sense, quote unquote, but I still enjoy it. And therefore, the streaks are, you know, set up, but I still enjoy it. So that's unfortunate. See, the thing is, though, that Goldberg streak was like it was every match, like week to week, his streak was going. The Undertaker was a W a WrestleMania streak. True, true. That is, that is even is. more impressive. Also true. Which means for over 20 years, he was undefeated at WrestleMania. Goldberg, you know, he had his streak, which is still really good and really awesome to watch. But I don't think it's quite the same if you ask me. You know, that's really weird because I didn't think of it that way. But because WrestleMania is annual, you're right. A 20 plus streak automatically means 20 plus years. That's ridiculous. And that's without a break. Okay, so I'll ask you this. And this is the kind of stuff that I don't think about because I just see Undertaker and I just enjoy. So does the term American badass mean anything to you? I'm not sure if I'm using the right term. Yes, it means a lot to me. Good, good, good. So I don't know the phases. Do you know the phases and what's up with that? Phases in what do you mean? Like which gimmick he was at at which years? Yeah, see, like I didn't know he was ever not creepy dude with the tongue and the eyes. So I guess there was a motorcycle phase. Yeah, I think it was to either nineteen ninety nine, somewhere between ninety nine and two thousand one. Like he was after his buried alive match, I believe with Vince McMahon. He came back at I believe it was Unforgiven or something like that. One of those, oh, either Unforgiven or Armageddon. I get those two mixed up. But he came back to save The Rock and Kane, I believe. Oh, interesting. Because <clears throat> it was like the whole DX versus rock era, attitude era kind of thing. You know what? Did So clearly Undertaker beat up a lot of people with the WrestleMania streak. Are there any notable ones? Was The Rock one of them? I don't believe The Rock was one. Okay, I know okay. Stone Cold was one. Triple oh, H. Nice. Mankind. So I, oh, nice. I have the article pulled up. Okay, okay. So here, here we go. Right from 1 to 21. Jimmy Snuka. Okay. Wow. Jake the Snake. Wow. Giant Gonzalez, 
King Kong Bundy, Diesel, Psycho Sid, Kane, Big Boss Man, Triple H, Ric Flair, A Train, and Big Show. I don't know. A oh, two on one handicap match. Oh, shit. <laughs> Kane again, Randy Orton, Mark Henry, Batista, Edge, Shawn Michaels, Shawn Michaels again. Yes. I'm Triple right. H, Triple H again, CM Punk, and then he lost to Brock Lesnar. So that's the scorecard, as you may call it. Fascinating. Yes. That's quite a list. That's, that's crazy if you if you think about it. That's nuts. Bro, the fact that Snooker was a name you involved at all is like, wow, yeah, that is a long time ago. That's pretty cool. What's really funny is that so we're now at least like 10 plus minutes into the show. I think we may ha- maybe have to explain our backgrounds with this whole thing, like where you came in, where what you remember. So it's funny reading Jimmy Snooker as the number one WrestleMania victory because I don't even remember those two coinciding with each other. Totally. Maybe that was too early or too late. But Jimmy Snooker to me is like way before Undertaker was like a new era. Maybe it was a comeback. I don't know. Or some kind of in-between. Maybe not. But I think that time for me in the early to mid 90s was kind of a prime time in watching wrestling. That's when I was really, really into it. Like I had all the video games. I had like the cards. Yes. I went to the live show when they came down here. I think uh, I think Big Boss Man was the uh, the headliner that time. I forget what year Dang, that was. Big Boss Man, <laughs> Jeez. yeah, I know, right? That's time like traveling. Time. Or... Yeah, no, I was young. I was pretty young going to that show down here. I remember that. Yeah, I started around when SmackDown started. Oh, okay, okay. So for me, in between, like I kind of faded maybe around like the late mid to late nineties. I mean, still kind of kept up a little bit, but more on the outside. And then uh, what's really funny is that uh, I started watching some stuff again when Total Divas came out, that sh- the, the reality TV show. Oh, that's right. <laughs> okay, wait. That's actually, actually, of a TV show. <laughs> uh, on that note, I'll ask you both. Do either of you have the monthly? I I'm do. just curious. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, okay. Because I, I know there's a lot of shows, even like an animated one, right, or something? Say that again? Sorry. Oh, animated one. There was like an animated show. Because I know there's a lot. I think there's... Uh, By the, the way, camp ground, ground, whatever the heck that. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Sorry. Anyway, Chris. No, I was gonna say, what what's your history? You think with WWE? You know, it's weird. I even at a young age, because growing up, I always hung around older people. That's just how I was, and I was told like, "Oh, you don't know this, so let me tell you how fake it is." And I'm like, "Man, I know it's fake. Relax." But the reality is like a like a soap opera. You know that's fake too. But people totally get sucked into those. So for me, it's like, it's cool, man. Everybody relax. Just enjoy. And for me, the, the, the whole fake thing was never an issue. I will say my most, I guess my heaviest time with it would definitely be DX times. Not because I was a fan, but holy crap. Um, I had friends who were. And it was just like, okay, I guess we're all going to X the crotch over and over. And that must have been Wolfpack times too. Because I remember that as well. The Wolfpack hand sign. Like, oh, ridiculous, ridiculous. Which version of DX, though, did you... Oh, interesting. Uh, I believe there was China. I don't know X-Pac as well or Six-Pack as well, but China was there. So that time, like three of them. Gotcha. When he was with Shawn Michaels, Triple H. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, ridiculous. Yeah. Over and over. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Correct. Right. Yes. I have a theory, and I need to hear your point of view on this. Okay. So, Undertaker for me. Like, my brain just does this. Okay. So, like, imagine if I was in the crowd... And the lights go off. Boom, it's on. It's on. I know what's about to happen, man. The lights are off. Give me that gong sound. Oh, here we go. See, so for me, the intro is so damn good. Just the intro. I'm already hyped. So I have this theory, not just for Undertaker, but for others as well. Either they give the good hyped intros to people and therefore hook them up, or the the intros themselves help the people. I say that because um, I think it was The New Day. There's a couple of groups where like they have a great intro, and by the way, they're also really popular. And then people are like, oh, the the Stone Cold, the crash noise, oh, so good. The glass shatter. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I just, yeah. See, I'm pumped already. It's just a sound effect, but man, man. So I I just noticed that like it can't be a coincidence. You know, like that has to do something to the subliminal or something. It's definitely like the music entrance music plays a big role in fan connection 
Like there are some sense. theme songs where you're just like, cool. I mean, I like the guy. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> not hype about. It. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the Undertaker's darkness gong thing yes. didn't start until later, until people oh, already started loving him. Ooh, that's an interesting yeah. point. Okay, okay. And same thing with the glass shatter. Oh, I didn't know that either. Oh, okay. So maybe they do pass it on to people they want to promote, I guess. Because it's um, more so I, who has momentum is they okay, change okay. their their styles huh. and all that. Because on that note, DX, like I can see the green screen thing or the green stuff. I can see the woman in the G string. Like all that is in my head. Every intro, every time, it's the locked China in there. Moon. Yeah, 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 see, there's all the moves and yeah, all that stuff. And I'm like, hmm, you know, like clearly it's having an effect. And that's just part of the fun, you know? Exactly. All right, so Kuroi, you said you jumped in to wrestling kind of around the SmackDown era. What, what's kind of your, been your progression since then? I've never stopped watching. <laughs> oh, cool. I mean, cool. there were like years where I was like, okay, whatever. But I think the years that I didn't watch a whole lot, was when they switched to HD and they had that giant LED stage instead of just the stationary like Smackdown fist and like Raw's like giant rectangular thing Majigi Titan Tron but okay. then I hopped back in probably near the end of that because there was buzz about like uh, CM Punk and the whole John Cena was like getting booed out of his mind so it's like you know it's it's funny because i in my mind john C- john cena is all positive then my friends are telling me no they they crap all over him and john cena sucks you know like i didn't i didn't even know all that so i'm surprised because i feel like they're pushing him for the hero role but it didn't play out that way yes that's exactly what happened is that's why everyone sort of kind of has a love-hate relationship with him so nowadays when he like has his little tiny returns or whatever people are like oh my god he's back but Ah, hmm. like like that whole latter half of his wrestling wrestling career he did not pull over well strictly because he was essentially shoved down our throats which is the same reason why people didn't like roman reigns after john cena left because he was the one being shoved down our throats for the record that's how i feel about john cena movies I felt like we were being, yeah, yeah, seriously, right? Like, there was a part of time where it was like, whoa, another one. Oh, another one again. Like, I enjoy The Rock on screen. I want to support him. John Cena on screen, I'm kind of like, eh, okay. Yeah, it's still weird. Yeah, yeah, it is still weird. Yeah, yeah. It's know. because he's not, like, an amazing actor like The Rock ended up being. You know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah, The Rock, yeah, yeah. he already had his personality, like, flooding out of him. Like, before, even before he left wrestling. And then, like, John Cena was already, he was getting booed out of the building when he became a movie star. Ironically, it's kind of funny. I saw Blockers this weekend. Oh, nice. In which uh, John Cena plays himself as a buff dad, and it was not good. Oh, (laughs) yes. I'm not sure if you guys seen that movie. Okay, so I did not see it. For the record, I've talked to my friends about this before. So, like, say Kane, right? Kane is a badass, big dude, great wrestling or whatever, right? But he doesn't speak. So we have a second human being who follows him around. And by combining two human beings, we get this one show, which you get to enjoy the words as well as the fighting. And then as I was talking to my friends, I'm like, wow, The Rock must be ridiculous because he talks on his own behalf and he can fight. And and my friends are like, yeah, that's why he's so ridiculous. You know, I, I feel like John Cena should be that. But I guess he isn't. He I'm used not... to be. Oh, interesting. That, okay. That's the thing. It's when he started getting his big main event pushes consistently, one after another, after another, after another. Hmm. Now, that begs to an interesting topic, right? Favorite wrestlers as characters, whether you like them as actual wrestlers or not. Ooh. We talked about how, like you said, The Rock just oozes charisma yes. right out the gate. No question. Yes. I mean, and as a wrestler, he was amazing too. John Cena, on the other hand, handsome dude, forced down your throat, but not the greatest in terms of acting chops or playing that character. Any other examples that stick out in your mind from all of the history that we've all watched? Okay, so see, this is the thing. With how much gimmicks change in the WWE, like outside of the iconic, like Stone Cold, you're not, you're not ever going to change that gimmick. 
The True. Rock. You're not ever going to change that gimmick. True. All you'll do is either change him to a bad guy or a good guy. Like, there's no gimmick changes. Like, say, with The Undertaker, how he had his dead man and then badass and then back to dead man. Hmm. But, like, John Cena, he had his little white boy rapper phase. Oh, interesting. I, just, I, did not, <laughs> I did not know Super that. entertaining. You know what I mean? Completely, like, super, utterly, like, holy crap, he's good. He brought that gimmick back at the re- most recent WrestleMania just as, uh-huh. like, a surprise kind of thing, like, one-off. And holy crap, dude. It was, like flashbacks like for days it's no more good guy john cena yeah i see it from sleepy sora in that chat i and on um i have a picture of doctor of thugonomics john cena (laughs) yep exactly (laughs) but see that john cena was entertaining as all hell it's because he was doing his own thing but at the same time he like the corporate wasn't just like shoving him in places he actually looked like he was earning his opportunities instead of just Oh, you're in the right place, right time. We have no one else to give it to, so we're going to give it to you. Okay. I'm going to throw this down because one or both of you use the word gimmicks. So, Chris, let's see if you remember this because I kind of don't. But I was watching some kind of like documentary thing, and they talked about the crazy gimmicks that they cover in wrestling. And one of them, apparently, was a dude eating live worms. Boogie I man. don't re- So you, this, that was a thing. That was a real thing, and you remember that. That's a damn real thing, man. <laughs> oh, shit. I, that's just so creepy and weird Chris do you remember that I don't even know that I do not yeah. I'm gonna be looking it up Lot, while you guys are talking literal about it. live worms so, like fish bait yeah I'm like that can't be real but there you go yeah I mean he spit most of them out okay I mean I guess for sure there's at least a couple that are like <laughs> slithering down his throat right now <laughs> oh man thank you thank you for that visual hey chat everybody enjoy that visual okay but, uh, he used to slap a clock on his head too oh wow fascinating okay chris i will say this to answer your question from earlier i'm not sure without seeing a list but i was always a fan of stone cold you know what yeah just always i love the vulgarity i don't drink at all and even his beer drinking i'm like yeah man that's cool i'm digging all this one of the things i liked okay so um all right so to, to dump on the rock i'm a huge rock fan to dump on the rock uh the people's elbow right you put the guy down in the middle rope 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 then you jump on drop on him or whatever there's a lot of I guess prep to it. I love that the stunner just boom appears and some poor bastard is getting stone cold stunned. And I, I just, I used to love that so much. It was so quick. And here's another thing that really speaks to how well he was presenting himself. When I heard there was a stone cold podcast, I was like, dude, that's awesome. Like there's a lot of stuff where Wait, I'm, there's a stone cold podcast. My yeah, knowledge, there's a stone right? cold podcast. There you go. Yeah. I remember hearing that. I was like, holy crap. Again, I don't drink, but I would have a beer with him. I would buy him a beer. You know, like, he just seems like a cool dude. For UFC terms, for me, it'd be like Randy Couture. Just seems like a cool dude. I want to hang with him, that kind of stuff. So yeah, Stone Cold, I, I, I used to think quite highly of him. On that note, I really enjoyed Goldberg's aggression as well. But that's not hang out fun stuff. You know, you just, just enjoy him in the ring, pretty much. So that'll be fun too. What uh, comes to mind for me, and this is bringing it way, way back. Okay. I heard he was a jackass, but the whole like Ultimate Warrior shaking the ropes thing, dude, like that was a huge like power up character yes. type thing to play, and I was really uh, into the spectacle of it. I-, I don't know why, but you know, it's because it's a guy just roiding out, man. It's yeah, it really. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't associate that term with him, but yeah, yeah, that's pretty accurate. It's silly because everyone you... in that era, dude. <laughs> true, also true. If you talk to anyone about wrestling and you just shake your hands the way he, boom, oh yeah, ultimate, like they instantly know. Is your special move shaking the ropes? I, you know what? Yes, it is. There you go. Sleepy Sora, I heard that the people's elbow was a dare that I think Triple H or someone told The Rock to get something stupid over. Fascinating. Fascinating. Okay, okay. Kuroi, can you validate? Can you validate that? <laughs> I can't validate that because I don't. I've never heard of that, but it does sound S- yes. silly. <laughs> okay, actually, here, here's one that I never understood, and this especially applies to Undertaker because there's moves that I didn't even know my friends were telling me about. Some people get one special move, some people get like four. Do you know what's up with that? Yeah, and like, I what's don't up? know what's up with it, but it's true. I mm. think it just depends on what finishes a match and what looks like it'll finish a match 
because nowadays even the choke slam isn't really a finisher more than oh. it is a signature. So oh, there's a finisher and then a signature. So like for Kane Undertaker, the choke slam was a signature. It was not a finisher. Their the finishers were the driver. tombstone. Tombstone, baby. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, tombstone. Whereas the Big Show, his finisher was the choke. I'm sure that's a factor of popularity too, like everything else, right? Yes, exactly. It's like getting. It's like what Sora said. Like, it could be the stupidest thing. It could be the funniest thing. It could be the most serious. Holy crap! Holy crap! That was awesome. Kind of like thing to get over. Like, remember, Mick Foley's was shoving a sock down your throat. They tried to That's true. they tried to play it like a real attack, and yeah, even even as a viewer, I'm like, huh? Yeah, it, it was weird. Yeah, I mean, his <laughs> before the whole socko thing. Yeah, it was called the mandible claw, which is essentially you take your two middle fingers, okay, and then you shove them down someone's throat and you push down on their tongue to make them choke. Oh, you know what I or mean? Or puke. So yes. I'm gonna keep it PG. But you can imagine <laughs> yes. what it's like. Yes. I, I'm sure. I'm but, sure yeah. Like they add when they added the sock, it was mm-hmm. literally for fan service. In my brain, I didn't hear that. What I heard was it was a little more G-rated. So a great example, and even as a viewer, I was kinda like, this is weird. Uh Val Venus, aka oh, Pal Venus. Oh yeah. That it was just <laughs> weird. I'm like, okay, this guy is kinda like stripping in front of me. I don't know what I'm to think. And then I remember, because I stopped watching for a while, I came back. Then there's corporate Val, you know, a.k.a. all dressed up. And what was it? He was anti-nudity or something. It was weird. Like, they were clearly trying to swing backwards on that one. Like, get back from where they were. Yeah. So I'm wondering if the sock thing was that. Like, let's not be super grotesque. Let's make him silly with a sock puppet. Literally a sock on a man's hand. But the whole thing about Mr. Sokka was it was wrapped around his PP. Oh, oh, honestly, I didn't even, I didn't even go there. Of course, of course, that makes sense. That's why he's Sako. Okay, moving on then. So, (laughs) I pulled up the the window. Moving on, moving on. All right, all right. right. That's right, we're we're not trying for a G rating here. (laughs) Fuck, 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 fuck. There There you go. go. No G rating. That's that's five. All right. All right, let's see here. I pulled up the article that Sora dropped in the chat. Okay. And the headline is, Triple H says the people's elbow would never have existed without a dare from Mick Foley. Oh, Mick Foley. That sounds all right. All right, all right. The quote is, one night Rock did the people's elbow, which wasn't known as the people's elbow. I guess it was. this was, let's try to make the Undertaker break character or whatever it is. Oh, interesting. The people's elbow was, watch this move that's going to make you all lose it. Well, didn't some, it. Didn't some guy specialize in a leg drop? That was a thing. Hulk Hogan. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, it was Hogan. It was Hogan. Yeah, yeah, see? Yeah. So, I mean, it's another drop on a dude. I'm okay with it. I mean, if you think about it, what's really funny, Hogan had that whole thing of, like, ripping the shirt and stuff like that, but his moves were shit. <laughs> like, he had the, the big boot and he had the leg drop. What else did he actually have? <laughs> he just had the shaking the ropes. Oh, or shaking, yeah, yeah, no, that's Okay, yeah. Shaking his arms. Shaking his arms. <laughs> that's true, shaking his arms. Didn't also he known as himself? hulking out. Yeah, sure, he slapped himself. But yeah, what I'm saying is, at least like um, the tombstone pile driver was like a unique thing, right? True. I like laying stone them to cold rest. stunner. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Hogan's moves were fucking <laughs> garbage compared to that. Like he yep. went a long he went a long way with those moves, though. He went a long way. He did. Yeah, yeah. He did. So interesting. what's funny is I don't even know if even the later incarnations of Hulk Hogan, like when he went NWO and everything, I don't even think he had new moves then. No, nope, he's had the same move set. Wow, it's a, it's a. If it ain't broke, I guess. Okay, okay. It's all for show. True. Also true. Also true. So let's, they let's think he's about... the only one that's ever had a leg drop finisher. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Oh, I got. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Interesting. The interesting. only other person I could think of was Grandmaster Sexy, but his Grand was from that... the top rope with the goggles. So we're talking about special moves. I remember there's a point. I don't think it was Kane. I think it was Undertaker. And there was literally a grandma because they wanted to bring a grandma on stage for whatever reason. I forgot what her deal was. May, uh, and then it was... Pro- yes, yes. Pro- that sounds correct. Yeah. And for whatever reason it was, how dare you, now I'm going to attack you. And I remember he did the tombstone on her. And when I say those words, it sounds so terrible. But I remember watching it and it was like, I'm going to pick you up gently. I'm going to lower you slowly. <laughs> and I'm going to place you down nicely. And I remember, like, you know what? Technically, that was that was a tombstone. Technically, so I, I had to I had to admire that. 
can also be applied to grandmas out there. Yeah, I mean, Mae Young has been wrestling since like the 60s. So her body oh, is like know that. built. Yeah, and the, yeah. like the stuff Undertaker did to her was like nothing compared to like what the Dudley boys did to her. Mm, I forgot about them. Like the Dudley boys power bombed her off the stage through tables <laughs> and she survived. <laughs> Which is good. That's good. Yeah. So I have a question for you because clearly you've been following. So mm-hmm. for me, I have not been following as much. And then I think most recently they were here. But right before that, the the WWE made its way to Honolulu. And I remember watching and as my friend turned to me and he said, so it was um, it was two guys I cannot name, but they're big enough. Like I knew their names. So I can't name them now, but they were fighting the first match. And the crowd's going nuts. It's ridiculous. For like the smallest thing, slap the guy in the chest. The crowd's like, whoa. You know, and my friend goes, dude, these two guys are loving this because they don't get this elsewhere. I guarantee you that. And then I thought, the thing about WWE, for us at least, is it's not an annual thing. It's not all the time. They're gone long enough for us to say, damn, man, when are they coming back? And then when they come back, Boom, instant sellout. So I imagine that would be their formula because there's like how many cities in all of America, right? Just keep hitting the different cities. So my question to you is, are you familiar with that lag time? Is that a known thing? Like after, se- like, okay, so like say it took them seven years. Don't worry, Alvin. Seven more years, they'll, well, they'll be here again or something like that. Uh, there's no set, at least not to my knowledge, like a set schedule. Okay. They set it every year. Of course, they hit their big cities like Chicago, Detroit, Miami, and then they'll hit like random little towns that have arenas. Like okay. even for LA or like greater Los Angeles area for that matter, because we have the Anaheim Stadium. Hmm. Like even then, we only see them once a year. Oh, okay. Oh, that, yeah. that is quite frequent then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So it's like, it's not like they'll be in Chicago twice, Detroit like twice, but it's just, I think it, it's all about like where the, can they get their trucks. Oh, you know what I mean? Hmm. It's like, how far can they get their trucks? Are they going to be anywhere in the area? They had WrestleMania in Santa Clara, which is like the Bay Area up here. Like the last WrestleMania that was in LA was WrestleMania 21. Oh, wow. Okay. And of course, I'm pretty sure we're going to get it again once the LA stadium opens. The new Chargers yeah, yeah, yeah. Ram Stadium. Just because they don't, do, they don't do WrestleMania in arenas anymore. They do football stadiums. Because it's that big now. Interesting. That makes sense. That makes sense. But okay, wait, Chris, I mm-hmm. I need to say this. Kuroi, I'm hating you just a little bit right now. I live in Honolulu. We do not have an NBA team or NFL team or et cetera, et cetera team. Damn man, that sounds amazing. Yeah, Everything but you guys have the all star game though. I get well we Exactly, exactly. We kind of Not anymore. Where is it now? It's not here. Miami? Okay. I think, well, I think it's you been went to Miami for a Correct. year. It hasn't been here. Year. Yeah, we definitely wasn't here last year. Yeah, yeah we, you guys always get the NFL All Star. We're trying. We're trying. Yeah. Uh, I think turnout is not as amazing as they want it to be. Also, Aloha Stadium is not so hot, to put it nicely. So. Yeah, that's because you guys don't have a big enough stadium. <laughs> no, really, right? It's you know what I I, I legit garbage, feel unsafe right? in some seats. Not all of them, but some of them, like the rust and stuff. Man, it's it's trippy. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, oh, man. It, it's pretty. No, really, yeah. Okay, and see, there you go. Now you understand where I'm coming from. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the crazy thing is that okay, I, I looked it up. The Pro Bowls in Orlando for the past three years, totally actually. Yep. But even when WWE comes here, they do it at the at the arena, like the Blazedale Arena, which is more like a the size of like a basketball arena as opposed to a stadium. It's a I guess I guess that's more show. like a. Oh, an interesting. Event. Yeah, it yeah, is a house show. A, yeah, yeah. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's that's actually not like a pay per view, but that's kind of how I don't even think it's a Monday Night Raw. It's just probably some random day of the week, honestly. Yeah, that's what we call house shows, which are like it. They're tour shows. It's called WWE Live, is what they call their house. Show. Okay. Okay. So it's essentially just like, oh, we're gonna send fifteen people to go wrestle for one yes. night and I, call it a day, but they're see, not gonna send production out there. They're gonna send simple like stand up stages one ring and like regular guardrails not even like the guardrails they use so mm. so Kuro you're definitely more familiar with this than I am I know, yeah. I remember with my friends I was like oh okay you know are we going to see x or y or z and they're like dude 
no. You know, like like they knew already. So yeah, you're right. It wasn't. I forgot who we had. It wasn't that big, but there's a couple names I knew. But yeah, we did not. We did not have the biggest ones. Yeah. So it would be a house show. That was correct. I don't think we had the crazy coverage either. I don't think of Blaisdell as a house show place, but I guess it is. Yeah. Dude, Blaisdell's totally a house house show place. It's tiny compared to even places on the mainland. Actually, that's a good point. My friend went to some WrestleMania, I think, and he said he the seats where he was on, his two friends with him had vertigo. Like, it was way high. Yeah, no, nothing we have goes that high. I imagine that might have been the first time they were in Dallas. At the I think Cowboy it was Stadium, Dallas. probably. Oh, yeah, you yeah. really know. You really know. It's your like stuff. when they f- when they when they first opened the Mercedes Benz Superdome, hmm. and then people that got nosebleed seats were like, "Holy fuck!" <laughs> it's funny. Trippy, you, yeah, use those two examples. Yeah, because that stadium is ginormous. I think that year they had upwards of a hundred thousand people in the tent. Dude, crazy, Chris. Do you know offhand how much people can fit? into um, how many people can fit into Aloha Stadium? No, but I can look it up. But it's funny okay, that you mentioned okay. because, yeah, mm-hmm. we have a stadium here that you say, yeah, the Pro Bowl's here. But I've been to both the Superdome and the Dallas Cowboys Stadium and our stadium here pales in comparison. It's not even a little bit close. Unfortunate, but I get that, yeah. Sleepy Sora in the chat. I think attendances are tanking for WWE. I think it was last Monday Ooh. or yesterday where they didn't wrestle until an hour and a half in. Well, that's kind of crap, like... Yeah, it's because a lot of promos mean there's now. Music? Oh, that make yeah, that makes sense. And okay. it's I, this most recent show outside of tonight's, but yesterday's show, hmm. kind of, they had to promo the crap out of it, strictly because of Double or Nothing, which is AEW's pay per view that just happened. I was gonna say my theory then is like, let's say for some reason it was in Wisconsin, I could get to Wisconsin easier than I could get to where was it? Was it Dubai? Like Saudi that Arabia. has to affect their Saudi Arabia, excuse me. That absolutely has to affect the attendance. Literally multiple time zones away, different country, you know? Well, different though. Yeah. Because Saudi Arabia's population itself, like they have a huge population oh. just there that's gonna go. I think uh I'll look it up, but I'm pretty sure that stadium in um Saudi Arabia is gigantic. Well, okay, okay, it's not as Big as some of the stadiums here, but it's capacity listed at 62,345, which is bigger than Aloha Stadium, which is 50,000 listed, which is 50, but, which is go. probably not even a true number. Honestly, it's probably less than that. And that's just the round, the round estimation. True. Well, you also got to remember that if they're at a football stadium, they have all the seats, plus they add a few thousand floor seats. True. Very true. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Like the average WrestleMania attendance now is about seventy-two to eighty-five thousand. Jeez, Kuro, I'm gonna ask you this. I swear I'm not trolling you. I want a real answer. I know for a while there, Ronda Rousey was in it. What are your thoughts on that? As a guy who's been following since forever, or however long you've been doing, complete waste. Oh wow! Oh, interesting. So, for you, would you say you know what? I don't even want her in here. Or are you saying wasted potential? It's, it's not that I didn't want her here. Okay. It's I mean, I commend her for doing a full year, like as a regular, not even just as like a Brock Lesnar who comes in every now and then. You know, I assume she was a Brock Lesnar. Interesting. Yeah, oh. she was actually like when she when she started, she was like, okay, I'm going to do an appearance here, wait a couple of weeks, another appearance, da, da, okay. da, da. Okay. And then she signed a regular contract for one year. She got paid bank for of one course. year. Course. But as it went on, I think the the character we all wanted didn't show up until the last couple months of her run, which is like the badass, don't give a fuck, essentially a mm-hmm. female Stone Cold Steve Austin. Mm-hmm. But even though they were sort of like there was another Stone Cold-ish female that was trying to push up, which was Becky Lynch oh, okay. at, the, at the time, which is who Ronda fought at WrestleMania in which was a triple threat match. And then it added Charlotte Flair, who is Ric Flair's daughter. Yes. yes. And then after that match, Ronda took off. Oh, like she just didn't come. And she said oh. that she's going to go like off the radar. Like she's not going to be on social media. She's not going to do this, 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 oh, this, wow. this, this, whatever. Yeah. She's like gone. Huh. I did not know that. I assumed she was going to do more movies. So I didn't know that. 
yeah, she said she's like she wants to start a family and all that stuff, oh, okay, or at yeah. least that's what the speculation is. Right, right. But yeah, she's like gone. Well, whatever she made, I'm sure that's more than enough. You know, like spent properly, I'm sure it'll be good. Yeah, oh, for sure. It's like it's bucket list for her. You know what I mean? See, I assumed it was Brock Lesnar style, where do whatever you want on your own time. Come in once a year, we'll pay you. You know, so that's that is fascinating. I think Ronda Rousey is like pretty fit for that type of environment though i think that we're kind of stuck in the whole ufc part of it but if she just did that only would you think different i can tell the difference between ufc and wwe in my mind there's a very clear line and i'm okay with that i enjoy both in different ways having said that i believe most people don't do that I believe there are many UFC fans, and I know a couple, who will say, Oh, no, this is terrible. Why you watch this? Oh, and I'm like, dude, it's, it's different. Just enjoy. I have to imagine that Ronda got crap for this. I have to imagine that. I can't imagine it any other way. Do you know, Croy? I don't know if she got crap for it. I know Conor McGregor was giving her crap for it. Okay. But then there was also rumors that Conor McGregor was going to go to WWE. I believe that. I, I mean, totally that see much, that happening. Yeah. Like, it fits him. <laughs> the fits only him. thing is, though, is he can't turn down his... Preset. He can't turn him down. Because usually when it comes to WWE gimmicks, wrestling gimmicks, it's more so turning your personality up. Oh. Because there's no... Like, if you turn it oh. down, people are just going to be like, um, are we? Hmm. we know you want to cuss. So he's, he's already fucking crazy and like he don't even need yeah, to be crazier, yeah, yeah. basically. <laughs> he, he brought the crazy, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I, I never thought of it that way. That's fascinating. That is fascinating. That could be kind of dangerous if you think about that. Oh, yes. I agree. But I mean like, and I mean this in a good way because it's writing based. It's like a caricature. You want to exaggerate the crazy things. And that's why freaking um, my favorite argument with people are like, oh, wrestling's fake. Why are you watching it? UFC is better. I'm like, you watch movie theaters and you pay money for that. Exactly. No, correct. It's just a different thing. Totally agree. Yeah. Totally agree. As long as you... Like, that's that's the thing that people don't like get through their thick skulls sometimes. It's yes. just like it's, it's sports entertainment. Yeah, that's the whole point, right? In that you just have to look at it from the perspective of what it is. If you're trying to say it's like real fighting then no, that's it's definitely not that. But if you can say that it's people performing crazy athletic feats to entertain you and playing characters to entertain you, then you can totally jump in and dig it. Exactly. And there's like a there's like a big like debate between like the word wrestling. Mm. Cause Vince McMahon, he doesn't want any of his people saying the word wrestle or wrestler. What? Okay. What's up? Be strictly because he knows it's not what they're doing. Oh. It's sports entertainment. It's scripted. It's they're calling spots as they're fighting in the ring. And when it comes to wrestling, like the real wrestling is like the collegiate style. Yeah, is yeah, what yeah, you yeah. see. Yeah, like the Olympic wrestling. Mm-hmm. That's wrestling. On that note, I was watching like True Life or some documentary, and there was a high schooler, and he was wrestling. So he would tell his friends, "Yeah, I'm a wrestler." And then like some people would be like, "What's your you know what's your song that you come out to?" And what's your special move? <laughs> He's like, dude, no, no, dude. Like, yeah. Not that kind of wrestling. People don't know. You know, that's a good point. I will say this about the quote unquote fake thing. So I was watching some kind of documentary thing and it's Triple H. And he was like, yeah, he's standing in the ring. He's like, yeah, people are like, oh, look how fake it is. Oh, it's bouncy. You know, he's jumping on the ring. He's like, dude, landing on this hurts. You know, like, I'll, I'll throw any of you and I'll show you. It hurts. And I think the reporter was like, dude, landing on that thing sucks. I mean, clearly there's a bounce, but, dude, it's not water. Well, this is the thing. There used to be a spring under the rings. That now they don't use a spring. Oh, wow. Fascinating. Hmm. hmm. That's kind of crazy. I, I mean, I the weight that. would ca- probably cause that. That makes sense. BH Oblivion. BH Oblivion in the Twitch chat. Biggest WWE memory, Undertaker losing his streak. We did hit that yeah, earlier, yeah. but... I don't even know what WWE is anymore since I quit watching that months ago. That's all right, man. I don't really watch a whole lot anymore, but kind of stay up and up with the storyline. So that's still kind of fun, loosely related, yeah, you know? totally. Agreed. Agreed. See, my beef with the WWE, which totally applies to, like, say, Marvel movies or other stuff is there's a lawyer side to things. For instance, when someone signs on for one year, that means in one year the contract is over. Like, I shouldn't know that, you know? I should just watch and enjoy. But like, oh, look, there's a new movie coming up. Contract's almost over. I'm like, 
Is this where they die? You know, my brain instantly does it. I try, I try not to get to that level. But I know stuff like that happens too in WWE because I've heard that before. Oh, yeah, we expected it. Contract's over. I'm like, oh. Yeah, they only recently started putting that stuff out there strictly because they can't hide it anymore. Correct, correct. Because, I mean, people will dig and dig and dig until they find something, which is why a lot of, like, returns, like, of older wrestlers aren't, like, surprises. Just because people are like, oh, I, found, I saw them at the airport. Da, 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 da. Kuroi, I'm a, okay, wait, first first the fun thing, because this was funny. I was with my friends, we are watching something, maybe WWE, it doesn't matter. So there's a crowd of people, and they're all cheering, and it's cool. I don't know what the deal is, I'm just enjoying the noise. And then one of my friends goes, hey, look, it's The Rock's mom. Oh, let me guess, The Rock's going to show up later, you know? <laughs> yep, that's <I'm>, basically <laughs> what happens. Okay, if I'm about to see a movie, I don't want it ruined. Don't tell me what's up, you know, let me enjoy now, yeah, the funny thing some is, people can't keep their mouth shut. Well, well, yes, but but not just that. So, I have friends. Apparently, there's like forums. They'll tell you what the next thing is coming up, and then they'll, they'll know. I guess for them, it's like I I'm on the inside track, and that's an interesting thing. I feel like that's not common in other stuff, but in WWE, that seems to be like a common thing. Like every week, apparently, they can they know in advance, not just by like time zones. But like, there's some kind of insider reporter guy who's spilling the beans. Yep, that's basically what it is. It's like a lot of people will get like inside interviews, or they'll get their hands on like a dirt sheet of some sort. Wait, say that again. Is there a name for that? Dirt sheet. Inter- Chris, did you know that? I heard that some things existed like that. I didn't know the term for it. Well, of course, the writers are doing it, but I didn't know like schmoes like me and you could look that up. And not by we term. We usually can't, but a lot of times the stuff gets leaked. Don't uh, know how. Maybe their fan got backstage and was just like, snap a picture and get the fuck out of there. You know what I mean? Interesting. But mm-hmm. most of the time it's under wraps. Well, they so try, that's right? mostly the reason why we can't watch WWE. It feels like TV and I don't like watching TV, but I mostly support Wrestle Talk. Well, thank you for supporting Wrestle Talk today. It's nice. I get that. Wrestle Talk's nice. another, it's a YouTube channel. Mm. Oh, fascinating. Okay, that's nice. fine. Well, thank you for, for supporting us talking wrestling then today. Also, good. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Brock Lesnar money at the bank was a surprise, or at least I didn't hear the speculation about it, or heard the speculation about it. Yeah, that was a thing. Like, it, it made a lot of headlines. The whole, like, for those that don't know, one of the more recent big action things in the WWE was the last pay per view, Brock Lesnar uh, comes into the money in the bank match he wasn't even in the match like like after guys have been like kicking each other's asses he comes in from like off screen in the last two minutes of the match yeah climbs a ladder and wins <laughs> shit like right, right. he did he did absolutely <laughs> no, this literally all he did his music hit he ran to the ring tossed one guy off the ladder climbed the ladder and won wow. that's it like no that fighting like whatsoever he didn't throw one single punch and then he was just laughing and doing all that which brings me to my sort of my next okay, thing. Okay. They're building him now as sort of a goofball. Oh wow. Oh wow. Yeah. Not huh. in the sense of like oh a Eugene which is like someone that had played a okay. like a slow okay. mentally challenged wrestler. Not that kind of goofball or like not like someone that's playful, but mm-hmm. like his newest shirt says Brock Party. <laughs> it has a, it has the the briefcase in between. But it's put as a boombox. So I'm like, I get it because Brock Lesnar used to have some sort of gimmick like that way back when. But mm-hmm. now it's just like, it's weird because people don't know how to feel about him. Like They'll be I, like, oh, crap, Brock Lesnar's here. And then they'll boo him immediately just because he just gets whatever the hell he wants handed to him. You know, on that note, when you use the term dead man and then the term American badass, those are awesome terms to me. Brock Party, not so much. <laughs> not, not the same. Not the same feeling. Interesting. Definitely not the same feeling. Okay. Living into the chat. Became <laughs> hype when Goldberg came back that one time. Think he was at WrestleMania. Took down Lesnar with two spears and a jackhammer. Oh, I didn't know that. Nice. nice. That was like a more heyday, I think, of, of both of them. Oh, okay. Okay. I think. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying I'm to a, look it up. I'm a Goldberg fan. Anything Goldberg's doing, I'm like, yeah, it's cool. But yeah, I remember that Goldberg came back because Brock Lesnar had called him out. Oh. Because Brock Lesnar has never beaten Goldberg. 
And then, so after I think it was something like 12 years, Goldberg came back. It was SummerSlam. I forgot what year it was. I think it was like 2016. Interesting. And then match started. Lesnar picked up Goldberg, put him in the corner, smiled at him, be like, hey, hey, what now? And then Goldberg pushes him down. Lesnar looks at him. He goes, oh, <laughs> funny. You're strong still. As Lesnar's getting up, Goldberg, spear. Nice. And then everyone's like, oh, my God. <laughs> Goldberg backs up. Lesnar's like reeling off of the spear. Boom, another spear. Nice. And then everyone's like, oh, are they going to squash this match? Which is essentially like squash match is essentially something that's just, it's there, it's gone. You know what I mean? Oh, I get you. I get you. So yeah, then yeah. after the second spear, Goldberg goes rah, 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 I'm Goldberg. And then picks up Lesnar, Jack hammers him, which is a sort of like a suplex mixed with a slam. One, two, three, done. Everyone's like, what the nice. Interesting. fuck just happened? I mean, a lot of people knew already just because you can kind of like see. So it's like usually it's like a four hour pay-per-view, right? Right, right, right. It was probably three minutes or three hours and 56 minutes in. And people are like, uh, pay per view is <laughs> almost over. <laughs> what are they going to, what? And then that happened and they're like, oh. Interesting. I'm going to share my enjoyment right here. As you were saying those things, I was hearing the Goldberg music. I love that music so much. I was just enjoying everything. That was awesome. I remember, and this was back in MP3s on CDs days. That was one of the tracks I would add because I just I just loved it. Oh, yeah. dude, I had a whole CD of wrestling. Dude, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Burn me that CD, right? Yes, yes. totally. Totally agree. Well, there's, there's playlists on Spotify now, so. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. I literally um, have one playing. <laughs> okay, so for me, I watch the show and I just see stuff. Whatever they put on screen is what I see. But I know for a fact there's background stuff always. There's always locker room stuff. So my friends are saying Undertaker is like a, I'm going to say the phrase, pillar of the community. You know, a lot of the noobs look up to him. Understandably, he's a veteran. I feel like Undertaker is on his way out. I don't know. My question to you would be, is he still? Okay, see, that's what I thought. He's he's the once in a while guy. Yeah. So is there a new pillar? Do you know anything like that? So I will kind of do a little segue in that I actually am more tangentially associated to wrestling nowadays because I watch some internet content. For those of you who have listened to uh, our shows before, I'm a huge fan of Kind of Funny, which is a podcast group, and they are WWE fans, or at least a couple of them are. So oftentimes they have, um, they talk about, WWE things they actually have a WWE podcast that's available only through Patreon where they talk about a bunch of WWE things but uh, where I'm going with this is that they actually quite frequently get Xavier Woods on their shows that dude is he hustles man yeah he's all over the place exactly he is and it's the link between that and video games Xavier Woods hosts his own uh, video game YouTube channel up up down down by far one of the better ones on YouTube. Absolutely. And it's honestly, it's a bunch of wrestlers playing video games, which is kind of cool, actually. Yeah, that is cool. But recently, his partner, Kofi, won the... Okay, Kuro, you're going to have to fact check me on this. Which championship yep. did he win? The WWE Heavyweight Championship. The oh. WWE Heavyweight Championship. So to answer your question, Alvin, hmm. I think... A big part of the culture or people that people can lean on is actually the new day nowadays. Oh, fascinating. Ooh, how do you feel about that, Kuroi? Um, Sora had said it was Roman Reigns. I haven't is heard it? of oh. who the new locker room leader is. Okay. Um, okay. Strictly because a lot of the older guys are weaving out. Yeah, yeah. And like the only ones that are left, they're not like assholes. I can see that. I mean, it's not like. I get a whole bunch of behind the scenes WWE and seeing them on other content and seeing them talk more plainly on other content. It's just refreshing to me. Yeah, no, I, I completely get you. And it, that's, that's the thing also is I don't think there's a locker room leader. I think nowadays oh, okay. Okay. wrestlers are more friends now. Oh, They're not okay. just, oh, hey, you're my coworker. It's, hey, you're my buddy. Let's go watch Game of Thrones and react to okay. it and make a video. 
Kuroi and a little bit Chris, but Kuroi, I'm going to let you choose on how far you want to crawl down this rabbit hole. I've heard there's a lot of dating in the background. Oh, oh yes. okay. Okay. See, I don't know. <laughs> it's up to you. However deep you want to go on that one. Bro, Dig. one night in China. Come on now. If that thing oh. exists. Oh, I, I, you my. know what? I did not know that, but I can just assume what that is. Okay, got it. Got if you, if I you mean, know, if your Woods <laughs> is in one of them videos, see, that's what, what I thought. Okay, that's what I. Oh wow. Well. <laughs> yeah, we are not G-rated anymore, everybody. Okay. So yes, it does exist. I mean, there was that whole um the uh, one of the Bella girls and John Cena, right? That was like uh, the whole basis yeah. of that reality TV show. Yep, that's true. and then that's true. that went sideways. Oh yeah. And then one of the newer girls, Alexa Bliss, just called off an engagement with one of the wrestlers. Okay, okay. So, all right, I remember I was watching this documentary once, and it was like Bret Hart. And Bret Hart and Owen Hart were quote-unquote fighting, and they're on an airplane. And they're just they're together, but they're quietly sitting there. And then I guess Bret said something like, hey, man, can you, can you pass me that magazine? And a lady on the side's like, I knew it! I knew it! I knew you guys were still getting along! It's weird, right? Because like people are so hyper aware of what's going on, especially the fans. Part of me, like you just said, someone called off the engagement, and I'm like, hmm, how much of that yeah, was a real? I mean, a lot See? of relationships that go sideways nowadays, they don't go public that often. There's that more sense. speculation or something. Each wrestler posted about that relationship or whatever. Oh, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Yeah, like, they, yeah. a lot of people put two and two together now. Oblivion in the chat. I remember Nikki and John Cena making a vi- video of them nude for a subscriber special. Oh, boy. Oh, what? yeah. I, rem- I remember that. I don't know that. Okay. <laughs> it was just, there was science covering their private parts. It wasn't anything special. Mm. But, like, yeah. more recently, the most recent, like, couple i guess you would say is becky lynch and seth rollins they oh, keep it under but fans like caught them in like either holding each other or da da da, da and they just recently went public with it oh, in the sense of like seth rollins posted something like a picture of them he's like oh i guess it's okay for me to post this now i was like oh okay <laughs> i have to assume vince is against them dating i have to assume it's you a know, privacy but... thing yeah, okay. Interesting. Like, that's the one thing that WWE is good at, is keeping real life separate from TV life. I'll bring in kind of my last topic that I was looking at. Did you guys see the John Oliver last week tonight where he kind of basically bashed WWE? <sighs> Dude. Yes. Oh. They did. Okay, go ahead, Corey. Because, you know, John Oliver is a comedian, right? But a lot of the facts he brought up are kind of startling. And I would not think that they're not at least partially true. One of the big ones, and it kind of plays into what you're saying about does Vince care? Maybe he cares for public to private life. But one of the big points that John Oliver brought up is wrestlers are not employees of the WWE. They're actually independent contractors. That is correct. So thus, all the laws that would govern full-time employment, which these guys put into their occupation, don't apply here. Like requirements for health insurance and paid leave and all those things, they don't apply. Therefore, the WWE wrestlers, they kind of have to fend for themselves. I'm speaking in generalities because, you know, there are probably more details that have surfaced over time. Like uh, one of the more harrowing stories he brought up was that I guess Jake the Snake Roberts had to have some kind of surgery, but Mm -hmm. um, he didn't have long-term health insurance after all his years of wrestling because he was an independent contractor. Now, granted, is that shame on him in some ways? Maybe. I don't know, right? It's hard to tell with that kind of situation, but the fans crowdfunded his operation. Mm -hmm. There's someone who set up like a GoFundMe or whatever uh, it was, and that's how he got through. And apparently that's not all that uncommon on those sites like GoFundMe. But it's kind of interesting to see how the back end of that. And maybe in that sense, like we say, does Vince care? I mean, to an extent, maybe he does, but technically they're not his employees. So does he have to care if they're showing, you know, their relationships? Okay, okay, hold hold up now. Correct, all those things are correct. But Vince is a very smart man and I'm sure he's got a lot of smart people working for him. These are chosen moves. You can't unionize. Doesn't work like that. Like, oh, how convenient for them. You know, like, these are chosen moves by the powers that be. So, 
It's hard. Okay, go ahead, Corey. Go ahead, man. See, it's not that Vince doesn't care. He's it's a smart business plan, strictly because yes. they're signing and it's if they're not reading their contracts, that's on them. You know what I mean? Yeah, it sucks that they have to get their own insurance. Only partial of their travel and room, like their room and board, is covered. But at the same time, it's like it's reimbursement for their room and board stuff. But the thing is, as an independent contractor myself, mm-hmm. whatever, you can write off anything that you're paying for. And if they don't want to write anything off, that's on them. And in the sense of like Vince caring or not, like WWE has a recovery program from like drugs. Huh. steroids huh. and all that stuff for their former employees for their current employees and all that it's completely free to the people that use it it's like the concussion protocol kind of thing that's like any injuries that people have suffered while working with wwe can use that for free Kuro, i'll ask you this clearly you know do you feel like the average wrestler knows all this yes okay okay because this is all news to me you know, but I hope they know that there's programs they can use and that would help them. Those things are advertised. They are. And I'm not trying to villainize WWE in any way. It's just interesting. The business model, like Kuroi had mentioned, it works out very well in the company's favor, which is by design. Yes, Vince is a businessman and he's brilliant at it. But John Oliver's story kind of made comparisons to the NFL or the NBA or things like that to where it's way different. Somehow, professional wrestling, sports entertainment, whatever you want to call it, has evolved through this model and continues to. Here, here's a big point, okay? So let's say I, uh, I don't know how this works. So let's just say I had five bars. You can come to my bar and you can sing. You're not my employee. You can be an independent contractor and sing at my bar if you want to. Now, by signing that contract, it also says you can go to other bars. Well, dude, there's bars everywhere. You know that Alvin bar? I don't want that bar. I'm going to another bar. No problem. Now, in the case of wrestling, you don't want to go WWE. Okay, screw you. That's it. I don't even know what second place is. I can't even tell you. You know, like they, like WCW is not a thing anymore. Where would There's they go? A, you know? Okay, so here's okay. how America's big wrestling scene turns out to be. Okay. So it's WWE, and then there's a brand new promotion that just popped up this weekend called AEW, All Elite Wrestling. It's okay. essentially... Most of the people will go to New Japan Pro Wrestling, which is the big one in Japan. That's where most people will go to train. That's where most people will go if they're not in the WWE, because that's the second, that's like one of the second biggest promotions in the world. But AEW is essentially taking New Japan. So, yeah, this was mentioned earlier, right? So, AEW started uh, by Cody Rhodes and um, the Matt and Nick Jackson, the elite. But it's funded by the rich owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's right, the Young Bucks. What yes. are your thoughts on that, Kuroi? Did you get to watch the All In um, or Double or Nothing pay per view or anything like that? I watched Double or Nothing. It was it lived up to its hype, but I can already tell what direction it's going to go into. Interesting. And people are saying, "Oh, it's going to be a WWE killer." By far means, it's not going to be strictly because it's two different demographics. WWE is driven towards children. Mm-hmm. AEW, Ring of Honor, TNA, that's all towards the legit pro wrestling, quote unquote, fan. It's like, it's the adults. Though. There's going to be the blood. There's going to be the women in underwear. There's going to be all that. Not in WWE. Strictly because the reason why it's not going to kill WWE is because it doesn't have the extra umph. It doesn't have the stories. It's not going to have like all the side stuff. And that's what drives WWE. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be great action. But look what happens when you see good action over and over and over. It gets stale. So it's going to be like, okay, it's cool. But it's going to be cool for so long. Cool, like, right. I got to ask you this. This is a writer question. Of course they have writers. Guarantee, right? Do you know how many? Do you know what kind of a deal? about three or four writers mixed oh, with... Oh, interesting. Um, so, boys, any final thoughts on the WWE Roundtable Discussion Podcast? Okay, when it comes to the Saudi Arabia shows, I don't necessarily care for it. 
it's going to be cool. I mean, I'm going to watch it. It's at 11 a.m. It's like, come on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Interesting. Yeah. And it's just like, but the matches on the card, like outside of Goldberg versus Undertaker, everything else is just like, whatever. Oh, wow. Like, okay. The only other like big match I would say that's on it is Triple H versus Randy Orton. It's oh, that's Old cool. school rivalry. They're trying to renew. You know what I mean? But they're not, not going to renew it. It's like a one time thing just for their eyes only kind of thing. Hmm. But. That show is going to be nothing unless something big happens. Mm. It's just going to be a glorified house show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when it comes to the state of WWE and AE versus AEW and Ring of Honor and TNA, or which is called Impact Wrestling now, WWE is going to be on top for a very, 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 very long time. It's going to be a long while before AEW even gets traction because they're only going to have a one weekly episodic television show. And even then, it's just going to be like, it's cool action. And that's about it. You're going to see the same action the next week. Yeah, so the new talent, AEW, that's where you're going to find them. But the thing is, WWE isn't just about the wrestling. It's not just about the shows. They have their outreach programs. They have like their Connors Cure, their, their Cancer Awareness, their This, 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 Make-A-Wish. They have mm-hmm. all that under their belt. And that's not going to go away. Where, True. yes, it's completely possible that AEW can dethrow them but strictly off of action they're not going to they're not going to come up from start and then all of a sudden beat a billion dollar company like and that's not even to say if vince and triple h who's most likely going to take over sometime soon is going to flip the script and take the pg rating off of wwe great it's, i'm yeah ahead, i'm gonna throw this down real quick from what you're saying I don't know the wrestling arena that well. However, I used to MMO a little bit, and WoW was the thing. And I kept hearing over and over, the WoW killer. You know what? WoW has not been killed. Exactly. It's, WoW has not been killed. More so as it's been put on the back burner. Sure. You know but what I mean? There, like, you know? Exactly. It's still there. People still play it. People still love the crap out of it. Which is why, like, a lot of times, like, nowadays, when the fans are like, oh, AEW is going to kill WWE, I'm like, like this, it's so stupid now that da, 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 da. I'm like, I get it, but at the same time, it's like, but you're still watching. Yeah, <laughs> you know Absolutely. what I mean. One hundred. It's like you oh, have, 100%. like you have to be watching it to know that it's crap. And like, their TV shows are whatever. Like it drives the stories, but it's the pay per views that you really want to focus on, like because that's where all the good shit happens. Okay, so my final thoughts. So this is coming from a guy who, to put it mildly, is not up to date on WWE stuff. So for the most part, I only know the WWE WrestleMania things because my friends are like, hey, let's get together, you know, that kind of stuff. So this is for everyone listening who is like me, who does not follow everything. You know what? If all you're watching is just the WrestleMania, that's still fun. You know, get in there. That, that's all I can say. Like, if you're a UFC fanatic, you know what? WWE is still enjoyable. So get in there. Have fun, you know? So I'll jump right in the middle between you two guys because I probably know a little more or follow a little more than Alvin, but definitely Kuroi is the number one wrestling fan in on this show today. Definitely. But being someone who loosely follows the storylines through tangential media, in fact, I know more about it through watching the reality show or watching the YouTube videos of tangential related media. I still find the spectacle and the entertainment value to be very high. Dude, and totally. like we said before, as long as you kind of walk into it knowing what you're getting, knowing that you're going to get some awesome feats of physical prowess with a whole bunch of corny ass and some good acting <laughs> and character building. <laughs> yes, yes. Then it's great. I think it's great. Yeah, I agree. So you got to watch it for what it is. It's like, don't go into it hoping to see like the most crazy things. I mean, sometimes you will. But you have to go into it like, I'm here to be entertained. It's watching a TV show. It's watching a movie. It's, you're not going to go in there and be like, oh, this shit's fake. This shit's fake. This shit's fake. This shit's fake. Like, if you go in with that mindset, of course, you're going to have a bad time. It's like going to a party and you're like, I'm not going to enjoy this party. I'm not going to enjoy this party. And then the more you tell yourself that, the more it's going to happen. Well, we want to thank you for joining us on this week's show where we took a deep dive into WWE, our memories of it, and our thoughts on the return of The Undertaker. Wow, that is some nostalgia coming up. 
Yes. If you like what you're listening to, this episode airs on all the popular podcast services, including iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio as of now. We are broadcasting the recording live at twitch.tv slash network. so follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, so you always know when we're going to go live. You can jump in our chats, hang out, throw in your two cents, and be part of the show. Want to give a shout out to our special guest, Kuroi Boy. Tell the fans oh. one more time, who are you and where can people find you on the internet? Hello, I am Kuroi Boy. You can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Kuroi Boy. That's K-U-R-O-I-B-O-Y. Not I, even though I'm Asian, I don't do that. Okay. And on Twitter, <laughs> it's Kuroi Boy, but it's with an underscore. So Kuroi underscore boy. And if you like that Alvin goodness, please visit alohaalvin.com. I'm working on something very big, so please check, 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 and then check again. Alohaalvin.com. You know what? I write the way I speak. So if you enjoyed me today, you'll definitely enjoy the site. And the I best pe- place to uh, find some other stuff from me is uh, at How's It Chris on Twitter. It's normally where I just kind of throw up some random thoughts or post my uh, reactions to stuff happening in the world in the day, like Pokemon sleep, because that's a thing now. We want to thank you all for lending us your beautiful ears. And it's not goodbye. We shall see you later. <laughs>